Does God discipline His children? Is He some kind of angry God that whips us, or is He a Santa Claus that gives us everything that we want? Let's talk about it on this episode of Inverse. Hey guys, you're watching Inverse, and on this episode, we are looking at the topic of dis discipline in the covenant. My name is Justin Kim, and in the studio, we have Jonathan, Siku, and Callie in the house. Hello. We're very happy to be <laughs> with the them house. and Ooh. talking about <laughs> discipline. Yeah. yeah, discipline, discipline. We have uh, been in a 10 week uh, arc looking at uh, the topic of covenants, both old and new, both experiential and historical. And we've covered a lot of ground in the last uh, last several episodes. And one thing that many people don't talk about the covenants is there are curses attached. This is the maybe the, the fine print of the fine print. Yes, if you don't follow through with all these things, then you got to pay these bank fees and all these you know <laughs> secret uh, penalties that you didn't know about. And those penalties exist in the biblical covenant as well. Why do they exist and how does that reconcile with the character of God? Mm -hmm. And that reconciles in the concept of discipline. So we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12 is the study that we're in. We're going to ask Callie if you can pray for us and we'll read scripture afterwards. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Father in heaven, we thank you for bringing us through the past few weeks and we thank you for bringing us to this point in our study. Father, you know all these things in perfect clarity. Um, nothing is confusing to you and it all makes perfect sense. And so we just pray that you'd give us the wisdom you promise in James 1.5, mm. that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, open our eyes, that we would see everything in the realm and in the context of your perfect love for us. Mm -hmm. We trust that you will do this for us even now, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Jonathan, we're going to go to uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verses, let's start from meaning verse 1. Because okay. like, I, I just like 1 and 2, so sure. let's go for it. <laughs> it's good reason. Hebrews 12, <laughs> 1 says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Okay, keep going, verse 3. <clears throat> For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons, my son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is the, there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had a human fathers who corrected, sorry, who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days Chasten us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Great. <clears throat> thank you, Jonathan. That was, a, that was a long section, but thank you for, for reading it. Uh, for those of you out there who, uh, who have been listening to Jonathan read, we also want to encourage you, even though it's on the screen, to take out your Bibles and read it in the in your version, or we use the New King James Version, whatever version you like, and read along with us. You can also go to inversebible.org and look at the Inverse Bible Study Guides. And there you can follow along at your own pace. Now, Siku, I want to ask you, you have children, and between you and your husband, who is the disciplinarian? Probably Mama. <laughs> mama being is that something that you enjoy? <laughs> um, you know, I heard about before having kids, I would hear about, you know, this p parents saying this hurts me more than it hurts you. Mm. Um, and I've experienced that once in a while. Okay. <laughs> Not every time, <laughs> to be honest. Like sometimes it's just, you know, 
you're being ridiculous. Like, but you know, sometimes it, it really is, especially when it's an issue where I know that my, my son, whichever one of them, will not <laughs> under, fully understand why this is really important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, then I know that th the pain, the physical pain that they're experiencing or the emotional pain from being sequestered or whatever, that for them in this moment, this is more painful than anything they could ever experience. But mm -hmm. I know that they need to learn this lesson because ultimately if they don't, the pain that lies ahead would be worse. Okay. So in that moment, I'm like, this actually does hurt me more than it hurts you because you don't understand okay. fully what, uh, what I'm doing. So yeah, no, I heard children who, who would quote their parents saying that and they don't, they don't buy a word of that. <laughs> 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 well, I think, you know, kind of going back to something we've talked about before, and this might be getting too ahead, but, you know, there are sometimes parents are, are imperfect, right? Mm -hmm. We're humans. I'm not a parent, but I'm going to say, still say we. Um, and there have been times that I'll, I'll use my students in the past of people that I've chastened that are you know, younger than me and in my care but not my children but they feel like my children sometimes and you know sometimes we chasten out of like anger like I'm just so annoyed yes. at you I'm gonna correct you yeah. but God is never like that mm -hmm. God's chastening his discipline plenarianism that's not a word when discipline. he disciplines us Discipline, thank you. <laughs> oh, I did a Sebastian. Oh no. Let's make the word longer. <laughs> I did a Sebastian. <laughs> Anyways, the discipline, it always comes from love and that person focused. Because mm -hmm. sometimes I discipline because I'm mad. You hurt my pride or you embarrassed me, and I'm gonna put you in your place, and I'm gonna be like, it's because this, I, like, this is good for you, and it, this hurts me. It doesn't hurt you. It's like, well, you kind of look kind of mad. So yeah. I think sometimes we we mar that picture because we do it imperfectly. As could, could it be that many people have a wrong picture of God because their parents yeah. disciplined them the wrong way? I 100% sure. believe that. Uh, one of the yes. commandments is honor your mother and father. Father and mother were given a temporary authority from God over their children, mm -hmm. and they are the conduits by which children learn the character of God. Exactly. You break that balance between mother and father, you break that character yes. of God within the parenting yes. mechanism, mm -hmm. and the picture of God can be warped as mm -hmm. a yeah. result. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's more not, not just on the side, they may be those who experienced parents who discipline too harshly or mm -hmm. you know not from the right place and then y there may be those who never experienced the discipline that they actually needed yes mm -hmm. and yes. Mm. so now True. just the concept of god disciplining at all becomes unloving mm -hmm. you know yeah. because they never even experienced that at the hand yeah. of a loving parent because mm -hmm. they, they they take the children take their their cues and, and, and their understanding and their standard mm -hmm. of what love is of of what you know um, care is and all these things they in the discipline they take that from their first experiences with their parents so this is a really a wake-up call to parents mm -hmm. uh, like you are modeling their the child's picture of God at least the first impressions they will have of God mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so uh, this is uh, I think when, it, when we talk about disciplining you know as we look at how God does it that can probably inform really well how yes. parents do yes, it. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And from someone who has children and someone <laughs> who has made that mistake uh, Google times over <laughs> and over, that responsibility is placed on parental shoulders, but with that responsibility, the, like, the corresponding grace is yes. also given yes. to be good parents. And so for those, those of you who don't have children, you know, whatever. But for those who have <laughs> children, for those who have children, uh, ask the Lord for forgiveness, ask for grace, and under the new covenant, there is a new covenant type of parenting. That's right. Uh, and also, for those of you who don't have children, pray for your parents. Yes. Uh, the parents are not perfect. Your parents are sinners. They need your prayers. And often, we don't tell our children to pray, not our biological children, but in, our, in, in youth ministry or whatnot, mm -hmm. we don't tell our young adults to pray for their parents as, as they it's should much also, much. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. uh, yeah, likewise. True. Very true. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go back to, to covenants here. <laughs> there, are, there are some negative aspects of the covenant. So within this framework, uh, too often, and, and we, we impose, man, because my dad just, you know, he, he totally, you know, kicked my butt and hit me all the time, therefore God must also do the same. Mm -hmm. So when you read these negative components in the covenants, we just make that connection there, and that right. God must mm -hmm. be angry, he must be impatient, he must be stingy, he must be... I don't know. He has a belt <laughs> and, and, and starts yeah. hitting me. Yeah, what's no, Kelly? Yeah, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, something I've said before is just 
when we read scripture, we need to remember all of scripture is true. Yes. So we're like, oh, this means God is impatient. Well, no, the Bible says God is patient. Well, this means God isn't loving here. No, God is always loving because mm -hmm. he's love. So all those things we know about God, we need to keep those in mind as we look at the discipline he gives, mm -hmm. right? So we need to keep that in the context. And in verses basically four through eight, Paul, or sorry, the author of Hebrews, mm -hmm. I think it's Paul, mm -hmm. um, is, is building a very logical argument of, of why you chase. It's like, don't you chasten your children? Mm. And don't you res like respect your parents for doing that? And isn't this a good thing? And I think of even, again, I'm gonna go back to my students because I don't have biological children yet. But I think about there was a, a certain student, which will remain unnamed, that caused me a lot of trouble and acted up a lot. And mm. I could see so don't much. Mm. Took some prayer, but yes, yeah. It's like, yeah, no, I won't go to that. So, <laughs> but seeing them, and I could see so much potential for good, like one of those natural leaders, and just someone who has so much potential. And I'm like, why are you doing this to yourself? Why are you doing this to me? And so I would chase them, and they'd be like, why are you so mean to me, Ms. Williams? Da, da, da. And like, my honest answer was because I cared about them. And it's just like, I love you so much, and why are you doing this? And it would have been way easier for me to straight up ignore them mm. and just be like, you're being foolish, you live your foolish yeah. life, I don't even care. Mm -hmm. So it actually required more effort and more self-control and more love and more kindness mm. to put myself in that situation mm. and try to correct them and help them see where they should be going. Mm. So it's actually less loving and more passive mm. and less conducive for a relationship to be like, you can go that way, Go ahead. Just let him be. I'll see you when you get back. So mm -hmm. this, to me, this is so indicative of God's deep love. Mm -hmm. I'm willing, he's like, I'm willing to be misunderstood by you. That's how much I, I love you more than I even love your opinion of me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do what's good by you, even if you don't get it in the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that's, that, was, that was good. Yeah, sorry. No, no, I feel very passionate. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you're out there watching. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. No. That's good. Yeah. Jonathan. No, I, I just want to underline what, what you just said, Callie. That is really profound because it speaks to the heart of God. Yeah. yeah he, he warns us. You know, this is before this. He warns us. You're yeah, in the wrong direction. exactly. I'm telling you what's going right. to come. If you, if you love someone, you will warn them. If you Absolutely. don't care about them, you'll just let them do whatever. You know, you're driving yeah. towards a cliff. If I care about this person's life, I will warn them. Yeah, but absolutely. But if I don't care, like, well, go ahead. Go ahead right? yeah. mm -hmm. I don't think this ever takes place in real life. But hey, <laughs> but, but God warns us. That shows us his love. And then he also disciplines us because he cares, because yes. he loves us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, like, in, in respect to the covenants, you know, they, when... I'm thinking about in Leviticus and in Deuteronomy, for instance, where you have the covenant blessings yeah. and the curses. Yes. Um, when, you, when you look at them, sometimes it seems like this is something that God is proactively doing, and then some look like it's just a natural consequence of if you reject the covenant. Yeah. And, and that, regardless of whether it's you know, God actively doing, you know, I'm going to do this, I'm gonna send somebody to you know, take you and take you into captivity, or it's something that seems like a natural consequence of that disobedience, like whichever way, whatever God permits is really ultimately for our blessing. Okay. Like it's only yes. because he wants us to Okay, be, Siku, hold that yeah. thought because we want to hear about God's blessing in the midst of that discipline mm -hmm. when we come after the break. Welcome back. We're in, in Hebrews chapter 12 and looking at this concept of dis discipline and uh, not discipleship, discipline. <laughs> <laughs> but they are the root, same root word yeah, there. Yeah. And There's Siku, uh, continue on your thoughts. Oh, <laughs> what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I was saying is, is that in the, in the curses and in the blessings, mm -hmm. right? Um, in the c curses that come as a result of not keeping the covenant with God. Mm -hmm. um, that when, the, when God gives the curses, his goal is to redeem us. Like what he, what he actually ultimately wants is to bring us back into covenant relationship with him. Like Callie was saying, it's not about a vindictive, angry, like oh, I'm gonna show you that you hurt me, you know. Yeah. His, his goal is actually to draw us back into that relationship. Mm -hmm. So the measures are always corrective. I mean, you just look historically at his relationship with Israel, mm -hmm. you know, they, they're, they're supposed to be in this covenant relationship with him as a nation and they start, you know, idolatry and all this kind of craziness. And he's like, he sends prophet after prophet to plead with them. They're not listening. And he's like, yeah. okay, I'm gonna send a foreign power to come and take 
you know, take you into captivity, to give you an opportunity when you're there, it's kind of like go on a timeout, mm -hmm. <laughs> have a little time to think about what you are doing, <laughs> okay? Have you had Pray. this conversation before? <laughs> yeah, talk really to yeah. Jesus. <laughs> and then you can come out of timeout and let's let's try this again. But mm -hmm. the goal of the timeout, the goal of that, that, that disciplining yes. period, that time, is to draw back into that relationship, is to, is to invite them back into a covenant agreement, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so God's discipline and God's chastening, the God's, you know, it's, it's not for the purpose of showing his wrath, but it's for the purpose of wooing us back, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as you're talking, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I just think of every time I, I discipline my children, I'm just rebuked, I'm rebuked. There are times where, just as you described, this, these children do not know their place, and I they want don't. to put them back in the hierarchy of the old covenant <laughs> the way that my mind oh, I feel has like you. Speak and to me. And so I will use me. every force, <laughs> covalent bond, ionic <laughs> bond, gravity, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the force fields, every force there is in the universe to make sure these children are in mm. their place. Yeah. I feel it. And ultimately, because of their, their age and because of my age, they do end up there. But I realize it's very hurtful to them in the larger picture. It's yeah. temporary compliance. It's mm -hmm. not obedience. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are other times where I'm like, look, I need to, I, I go to the Lord. I'm like, look, I want to reflect on how you have disciplined me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I saw, and I, and then what happens is, uh, in a, out of a, a supernatural, un, underived from me kind of mode, my voice gets really low. My, my, my anger goes away. My, my impatience is suspended. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still there. The <laughs> carnal nature is, is still, is, has to be tolerated. But then I'm trying to get this child to understand his sinfulness, his inability to obey. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is like, then daddy was just as impatient. Mm -hmm. And daddy's in need of this as well. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we get both on our knees and say, hey, dad, can you pray for daddy? And, he, and he's ready to pray for daddy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you need he's to very ready <laughs> and I'm ready to pray for him. And what happens <laughs> is then we just say, look, we don't know what's going to happen, but we now it's in Jesus's court. The mm -hmm. ball's in his side. That's the right sports analogy. Okay. And then let's just wait to see what happens. I love that. And, and then that, that has produced a very more fruitful picture of God in our family. Wow. Does that beautiful. happen every day? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that yeah. is, uh, pray for me. That's well, that's I just, I just want to affirm one thing that you said just on the practical. Of, I think it's so beautiful and Christ-centered when parents apologize to their children. Mm. And maybe it's the millennial in me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like we all need to apologize because just to hear that, because sometimes, you know, as I've done as a teacher, like you're in the position of authority. So like I must hold on to this authority. And if I apologize, I relinquish my authority and I make myself like you. Mm. But it's even just apologizing and owning that, that actually encourages your children. It, when I've apologized to my students, they're like, it's okay, Miss Williams. Like, it's mm. fine. Don't, don't cry. Like, it's okay. <laughs> and so, but like, it actually, that, it, it, it like yeah. woos them closer because you're mm -hmm. like, this is about a relationship, not about me being right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and it's, when we look in Hebrews, you know, just a chapter previous here, chapter 11, the, you know, the faith heroes chapter. Yes. Yes. chapter. You look at the names that are mentioned here. You look at Abraham, you look at Isaac, Joseph, Moses, you know, mm -hmm. these guys all endured the discipline. They, they needed discipline. We, we look up to them, oh, these are heroes of faith, right? But these all had, had to be disciplined, you know? <laughs> Abraham, we, we talked a lot about him in the last, you know, this season and last season. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you think of uh, Joseph, he had, I mean, he was a good, I love Joseph. but he had some issues there in his teenage oh, years, right? Pride and so, Moses, you know, he was trying in his own strength to take the people out. He killed somebody, you know? So there was this 40 years of discipline. You know? yeah. mm -hmm. So discipline is part of the Christian life. Mm -hmm. It's something we should embrace mm -hmm. under the new covenant, not as like, oh, you know, this is so terrible. Uh, it, it is a, a, it's a redemptive way of God, you know, trying to help us. It's, it has to do with discipleship mm -hmm. because it tunes us into alignment. It's not, God's not forcing. He's not going to push this on us. Mm -hmm. But as we agree to his guidance, his, his fatherhood over us, he is going to take us on a journey that helps us where we let go of our own ways and um, the way I want to live my life and we embrace the way of Jesus' life. Mm -hmm. It does seem like in the Old Testament there are times where God's volume of discipline is quite loud, however. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I appreciated, I don't know if this episode, it was a previous episode, in one episode, Callie, uh, of her <laughs> wisdom, of her sugar cubes that she offered, <laughs> so uh, presented that, that God is always, the context of where God is functioning from is m must be always studied. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so in those contexts where God seems quite loud and 
God seems yes. quite uh, this fervor and the mm -hmm. zeal and even what well, seemingly wrath and anger comes out. Mm -hmm. If you study, sometimes we just look at God's side and we're like, man, how come he's so angry? What's up with him? He's a little too extra for me and I don't like yeah. that kind of God. But you study the human response and the patience that God has endured, not for 40 years, not for 50 years, but for 400 yes. years, mm -hmm. yeah. or the level of rebellion, then it's commensurate to that level yeah. of discipline, yeah. that, that, that particular context. Yeah. So Kelly and then Siku and give, then Jonathan. Jonathan. Okay. Yeah, just a really short analogy to illustrate your cool. point. Is, you know, if you're just walking in a park and you hear, a you can't see them, but you hear a mom like, Timmy, for the last time, Get over it. You're just like, that mom has lost her mind. Yeah. But you don't know that Timmy is about two feet away from running in front of a car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He has, She has called him 15 times. You didn't hear any of that. You can't see the car. All you hear is the yelling. Yeah. And so sometimes in the scripture, we're like, we see the yelling and we're like, you know, Jesus, calm down. Like, right. that's a lot. Right. But Jesus knows where he's called them a a thousand times and just that analogy because I, I see that sometimes and especially someone without without kids sure. I'm like I don't know the context sure. of that so sometimes it can look over the top but it's like this is my last ditch effort sure. to save your life absolutely if my, my three year old's running towards a Mack truck I'm not going to have the gentleness of a <laughs> lamb I'm going to roar like a lion to make yeah. sure that child comes back exactly so, yeah and that is not any indication of a lack of love or a lack of no that's the most loving thing mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. and I was, ex I was actually going to give mm. a oh. real life story of that. Tell, tell me the real story. <laughs> no, but, no. <laughs> but I have another point though that I think is essential. Because <laughs> okay. no, okay. I mean that's the essence of it. You know, it's like I don't like yelling. I don't like hearing yelling. I don't yell, but yeah. I will yell. Yeah, yeah. If I my will. kid's life is in danger. Absolutely. Um, but the other thing that, that I was thinking about is, you know, in terms of how God disciplines, um, uh, texts come to mind um, like in Isaiah chapter 42, where he talks about a bruised a bruised reed, he will not yes, break. Yes, man, that's so telepathic. I, I have it open here because I, oh, that's the he next text I want to read. Oh, okay. can, can I read it? And yeah, yeah, so yeah. Let's go back to see here. Do that. Okay. <laughs> so Isaiah 42, <laughs> verse 3 is the text that I wanted to read, but the one that, that Siku brought out, uh, she mentioned. So for, verse 3 says, A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoking flax he will not quench. He will bring forth justice for truth. He will not fail nor be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth and his coastlands shall wait for his law. Right. Wow. And, and what, what, I, what I was thinking about with this text is when God disciplines, he's not trying to break you, mm -hmm. you know, and, yes. and this is something that, you know, my husband and I have talked a lot about. We come from, you know, I'm African and he's, he comes from an Asian background and, um, and Filipino. sometimes, <laughs> yeah, it's Filipino. Um, <laughs> I'm Zimbabwean. <laughs> sometimes, um, sometimes in the cultural backgrounds that we've come from, uh, and I'm not saying this is all African parents or all Asian parents, but we've noticed a trend. Anyways, sometimes it <laughs> seems like demanding obedience from your children is equivalent to breaking, breaking their, their will. will. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It's like you will obey me. You're a child. You're meant to be seen and not heard. You know, like whatever I say you do and you do it right away. You don't question me, you know, you know and it's kind of like really like breaking your child's mm. individuality, their will, their ability to think for themselves Jesus and all that stuff. Yeah. Wow. Um, so as parents, we, we discuss it a lot amongst ourselves because, you know, of our backgrounds and really praying and asking God to help us not mirror that in the way that we parent our children. Mm -hmm because we discovered from the way that God treats us, He doesn't do that to yeah. us. Yeah. Now the cool thing, I should, and we'll go to Jonathan, is in that verse, in verse 3, it said, A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoking flax he will not quench. And it's just, it's just a re revelation of God's gentleness in yeah. treating people. You have a bruised reed, and you just see a reed that's kind of hard, but once it's broken, it's kind of hanging on yeah, there by the like side. High. And all you need to do is just kind of like, just with a little, <laughs> and, 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 and it's gone. Mm -hmm. Or a little flax, it's like a little piece of, like a kind of thin string, and it, it's, it's smoldering. All you need is just, just pinch it, and it's, and it's <laughs> gone. Yes. Yeah. And so here, the gentleness of God doesn't even do that. No. Yeah. And so we're not, we, this is not some Zeus out there who's like flexing his muscles. Mm -hmm. he, doesn't, he doesn't smolder, and he doesn't, you know, twist. He's gentle. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. John. I want to point out something here back in Hebrews 12. And, uh, it says here. Back to Hebrews 12? Yes, mm -hmm. back to Hebrews 12. And here in verse uh, 2. 2. It says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Mm -hmm. Jesus endured the cross. Jesus endured the, the, the torture, the pain, 
the, the, really the, uh, the persecution of this world, all right? Mm -hmm. And he took upon himself also all the shame and all the guilt and all the sins, right? He, he endured all this for our salvation. Mm. And then Paul flips it and says, think of what Jesus went through voluntarily, all the pain and suffering so that we can have salvation. And then he says, um, verse 3, for consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, right? And then in verse 7, if you endured ch chastening, God deals with you as with sons. So he's now saying, listen, Jesus took upon himself, he endured all this suffering and pain and stuff from, you know, from, that he shouldn't endure. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that he can then give you discipline that is really helpful for you. He's not going to destroy you, you're right? Yeah. Our stuff destroyed Jesus, he endured it, but mm. God's uh, uh, principles and the things that he does, that his discipline will heal us and help mm. us. So he, he turns it around. And so he, he's saying, look at, be inspired by Jesus' endurance. Mm. He endured the, the worst you can, he endured the second death. Mm -hmm. So, and here you are, what you are going to endure is nothing compared to that, and it's actually going to heal you and help you. That, that word chastening is found over and over. It's connected to endured and yes. ends in verse 10, that we may be partakers yes. of His holiness. And verse 11, that it may be painful in the present, nevertheless, afterward, it yields yes. the peaceable fruit of righteousness Amazing. to those who have been trained by it. It mm. uh, looks like discipline is not meant for those who are not his children. It's for those who really cares about are those who are disciplined and in the personal care of the gentle hands of Jesus. Mm. How many of you want to say, Lord, I want to be placed in your hands, into your contract, into your relationship with me, into your agreement, and all this fine print of all the negative, I trust that it's there to ultimately discipline me for holiness. Uh, we, it's, a, it's a difference of attitude, and you cannot do it by your own strength. We need the new covenant mentality in our hearts, and only God can do that for all of us. That's my prayer. That's a prayer for everyone in this studio, and hopefully that's your prayer. God bless you guys. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next week here in Universe as we continue our study on the New and Old Covenants throughout the New and Old Testaments of Scripture. God bless you. Thank you.